This video is going to be about the power and magic of celestial phenomena. And I'm particularly going to talk about the ones that I've lived through and how they've personally affected me and what that means like as a whole and potentially what the symbolic nature of these celestial objects within this symbolic universe may actually help guide us towards or show ways that these things can affect us. And I believe they do, from solstices to comets to eclipses to uh, everything. I believe we are in tune with this system, whether we believe it or not, and it affects our lives. And so I'm gonna deal with some celestial objects that I've lived through, and this guy is going to tell you about the first one. Planet Earth, about to be recycled. Your only chance to survive or evacuate is to leave with us. Now, that's pretty major statement, pretty bold in terms of religion, in terms of anybody's intelligent thinking to most people who would consider themselves intelligent beings and say, well, that's, that's absurd. What's all this doomsday stuff? What's all this? prophetic stuff. You know, intelligent human beings should realize that everything has their cycle. They have their season. They have their beginning. They have their end. They have cycles. We're not saying that planet Earth is coming to an end. We're saying that planet Earth is about to be refurbished, spaded under, and have another chance to serve as a garden for another human civilization. Now, the reason this is such an interesting time is not only because we're on the threshold of the end of this civilization, because it's about to be recycled, but because of where that finds us. And where does that find us? Of course, if you don't know, I'm referring to the Hale-Bopp Comet, and that was the leader of the Heaven's Gate cult. Now this uh, Hale-Bopp came to visit Earth around 1996 through pretty much 97. It was here for a long time. It was the longest visible comet in known history and uh, destroyed the length of the comet of 1812 and the visibility of that. But either way, that was another one that was pretty much similar. So Hale-Bopp, when it came, was incredible. All of my friends, everybody, when we went outside at night, we would stare at this thing. We'd look at it through binoculars. We'd look at it in every way we could, and it was amazing. It was basically like every night, oh, is hale Bop out tonight? Is, uh, oh, there's a comet? And then we'd all talk about it. We'd theorize it. And around this time, I was only about 14 years old, so me and my friends could comprehend a lot, but also were missing a lot, too. But our theories and our imaginations were amazing. And so this was also around the time where I got a guitar. And about 1995 is when I got the guitar, and around 1996, 1997 was, um, and I had written songs immediately, within a week after getting my guitar, I started writing stuff down and taking notation, and when this thing came around, it changed everything. It made my mood, my everything, so much more creative, to the point where I developed a song called The Comet, parentheses, Hail Bop. And it was the number one song that I had written to date. I maybe created like 10 other songs with friends and other things. But something about the comet was different. It was a real song. It was an amazing structure. It sounded great. Incredible rhythm. It flowed really well. Whereas all my other songs were disjointed. This one was perfect. And it basically led me, it basically broke through a passage of writing music for me and led me to be able to write things that I did with my band Irrepress further on and Hollow Earth and, and to solo. And um, it really was a turning point in my life because my creativity just of music just got taken to another level. And that's kind of what this guy talks about. He refers to the, this Heaven Gate cult was really intense. I recommend everyone check it out. But he refers to the, the like basically being as a uh, a vessel that is that he can get on before Earth recycles and then maybe come back when it's when it's better and explore the kingdom of heaven and they, their, their things are amazing. They really talk about a lot of different stuff which is incredibly fascinating. You can find the books, I mean the website's still up and on the, way, on the uh, Wayback Machine and archive.org you can also find it. 
But here are some details, because Comet Hill Bob was very different, and I don't know exactly what it was. I don't totally believe it was a comet. It could be anything. But these are some of the theories that are found on the Heaven's Gate website. You know, space aliens and their like, you know, their quest to to basically find people that are ready, and you know, and find the ones that aren't being deceived by the Luciferians, and to take life to the next level, evolve to the next level of humanity, do all these things. It's really remarkable. But it was discovered by Hale and Thomas Bob in 1995, and then it came with a vengeance, and it was just, it was an unbelievable sight in the air, and they said it's got part of a 4,200-year um, um, cycle. So the last time it was around was like in 2000 BC or something, so it's pretty ridiculous. And it came and it went, and it was amazing. And there were a lot of people that were researching it because it was so visible. Amateur scientists all over the world were researching it. They were checking out the spectrums to try and figure out what chemicals were made of. They found water on it, they found sodium on it, they found all these different things on this comet. It appeared different times that jets there were certain jets that were forming and appearing. There were two jets sometimes, sometimes three jets, sometimes four. The tail was constantly changing. And so these are actually descriptions from amateur astronomers all over the world who were observing this. And they were measuring the coma. They were talking about the color and how it was changing throughout time. Every single day, people were monitoring this thing. It was an absolute astro astronomical marvel to anyone with, a, with curiosity. And so people were drawing this. It was people were not wasting their chance to see the most visible comet in pretty much Earth history that we know about in our time. And there were so many theories going around, it was ridiculous. It spawned all kinds of conspiracies, all kinds of different things that stretched from the Vatican all over. And people, there was a lot of misinformation that was happening. And so people really were thinking on different lines, like was this the return of a different planet? Is this some kind of alien spaceship and those Heaven's Gate guys are right? Or is this just some kind of comet that has a 4,000 year cycle that was coming back to enter our solar system. And that's if you hold, believe in that whole solar system and NASA theories. There, What if the Earth is flat and that whole symbolism, then how does this play out? What was this thing? Was this a rocket sent from somewhere? Was it a, a, a camera sent to spy on us for a couple years from some other distant part of our world? Was it a, um, a being that came? Was it a vessel of some sort? Was it another celestial thing? I have no idea. But it spawned a lot of different magazines and a lot of different thought from people from all over the world. And this was a really cool magazine that was put out by Independent Research Center for Unexplained Phenomena. And they did a whole Hale Bob section. And I recommend reading some of this because a lot of it is interesting. They bring up a lot of interesting theories that are very cool and um, you never really know what you're gonna find in this. And when you theorize about these things, and a lot of people were doing it, a lot of different potentials were covered and you know no one's really given the pure explanation of this is this this is exactly this no one really knows this was a mysterious phenomenon that appeared during our time and it inspired everybody artists just writers um, musicians everyone was inspired by this it was really incredible and everyone considered it a gift to be able to view it during their lifetime i i do i know i do and like all phenomena that cannot be explained, it definitely had some mystery about it, especially in the information controlling it. And this was one of the earliest examples of people on the internet and NASA and things really controlling information and keeping it away from the public. And this talks a lot about how NASA really was really into it during 1996, but as the thing became more and more visible, NASA kind of had a blackout and they stopped talking about it. And one of the theories was that a lot of amateur astronomers were seeing different kinds of ships or different movement or different stars located near what looked like stars, bright lights, near the comet. And so once this theory started getting around, they really brought out all kinds of scientists to discredit it, which is a sign that it could be true. But more and more astronomers were spotting other things around it. They were noticing other jets. Radio signals were emitted from it, and they seemed intelligent. They were rhythmic. They were all different kinds of things, water, jets, carbon emissions, all these things that were coming out and no one at NASA was talking about it. A lot of the main professional astronomers were keeping silent and only the amateur astronomers were keeping it going. So there's another thing and inter pictures started disappearing off the internet and look at this possible Vatican CIA link with Heaven's Gate suicide cult.
and it's unfortunate to have to think this way, but this 1996-1997 period was during the reign of the evil Clintons in America, and they controlled the media, they were in step with everyone around the world, all the world powers. So they wanted to keep their message clear. And one of the theories is that they, um, that this cult, whatever, Heaven's Gate, was not really a cult, but maybe they got destroyed, they got killed, and then in the media, they became a crazy suicide cult with all this spirituality. Therefore, everybody that believed in spirituality was just a quack. Oh, what are you going to kill yourself now? Like all this stuff, completely discrediting all the things that the guy said about the Luciferians and about all these other things that could have been pretty accurate. He is a two-hour video. I recommend you check it out. But either way, this hail bop brought a lot of people to thinking about the world and the universe in a very u unique way. Just like in 1800s in the 1000 comet that occurred a thousand plus years ago, people changed. People really looked up and connected themselves to the greater universe. And that's a powerful thing that governments do not want. And another time that this happened was around December 21st, 2012. And everybody remembers that as the supposed Mayan end date. Some people think it's happening now. Some people think it happened the year before. But either way, it was a very crucial time period. And this was a lot different than some of the other time periods. And again, the puppets in the media were, were pushing doomsday, they were pushing fear, they were pushing all this stuff. Books were being made, people were getting rich off of this topic, and who can think of the what's going to happen this day? And it was just like a buildup of so many people making money until the day happened, nothing happened, and blah, blah, blah. And so this day, when I first heard about this, when I was young, I was about six, and my friend's older brother told me about December 21st, 2012, and I thought about it almost every day, pretty much since that day. It was like a treasured day to me. It was a really holy day, and I never believed anything bad was going to happen. I always thought it was going to be a change for something good. And during around this time, geopolitically, uh, Hugo Chavez was ousted from um, Venezuela, and I remember my friends in Aruba were thinking that that was partially related, and I think on a global scale, everybody had a 2012 revelation around this time things were really changing in my life personally I was going I was living in someone's basement and I was just about to step out of that kind of lifestyle of being in people's basements and couch surfing and going on to another level of having my own domicile and home and um, that's kind of what happened and a lot of other things happened too. creatively I was expanding my art was expanding on a whole different level I was actually hitting some good success really at this point with a lot of different drawings and the world itself was just was at a turning point. Obama had got elected to a second term and things were going nuts. Collectively, any, everybody believed that something was possible and something could happen. I remember I was in Aruba one night in 2012 and a, a bolide meteor kind of came in the, in the sky and broke into different pieces. And I looked at my friend and I said, I was like, she, I was like, whoa, I was like, is that bad? Like, we're on an island here and it's not very high. And he's like, don't worry about it. It's 2012. So everybody kind of really came to a realization where, you know, they could die. And then when we survived it, we were all kind of a little rejoiced, I think. I think we were all a little relieved that nothing bad did happen. And that now all this kind of spirituality that we'd accumulated in thinking that we were going to die kind of could be used in a different way. And there were a lot of jokes, a lot of memes, obviously, and, uh, and different things, but all relating to the Mayans. And it was all relating from hearsay evidence of what we thought and interpreted from these people of the past and from their very few remaining um, books and structures and carvings. And this was my take on it. When I was, the day that it happened, I woke up for the morning sunrise. I was like, there's not, no way I'm going to miss this. And I went to my local hill, Blue Hills, or I went to Moose Hill, where you could see Blue Hills in, in Massachusetts. And it was a hazy day. It was really um, cloudy and very kind of misty. And one thing that I rem I'll never forget was I could see the hills around Boston. And there was a layer of mist, a layer of fog below all of them. So to me that morning when I looked out into the sky from this like from this observatory which I fire kind of tower that I was at I could see all the land around me and I saw these hills and they looked as if the entire world was flooded it looked as if all of Boston all of greater Boston was just flooded with a river like the oceans had taken over like something catastrophic and apocalyptic had happened but it was just myth mist it was just an illusion but it was actually, I was sitting up on the top of the tower freezing and I was laughing because I was like, wow, you know, I got to see the apocalypse, but nothing happened. So it was pretty interesting.
And one of the other moments of amazing phenomena was the solar eclipse of August 21st, 2017. And I have no idea still how to explain this or how anyone can scientifically explain what happened here because it just doesn't seem to make sense in me, to me how this happened in its particular direction, how it covered a certain area, how it came over this way and almost seemed to uh, be going a different way than it should have been doing. It was really nuts and this was another phenomenon that attracted to the attention of everyone, especially in America. Everyone in America was out there, there were traffic jams caused by this because everyone wanted to see it. It was really amazing and I think everyone had an amazing moment because of it. This was, we had just elected Trump and it was his first year, his first few months and this was kind of his, um, his celestial moment for his uh, a period of time in the office and uh, it was publicized very well. People were really thinking about it because it didn't really make sense. A lot of the just details of this simulation and whatnot just seemed very different than what um, was possible with the shadow being so big and different. It just it didn't make sense. People approve, check YouTube, so many people kind of prove that this was just a weird phenomena. And I remember seeing it in the day that I actually had this happen was during a day of a meet I had a meeting for a job I used to be an after school teacher and we had like a forced meeting in the summer during this day and I wanted to be I absolutely did not want to be at this meeting fortunately the meeting was outside but I'd been at this job for about six years and um, I was actually with a friend that a co-worker that soon passed away which is actually very sad but I did not want to be at this meeting at all. I wanted to be in the woods just sitting there looking up and doing whatever. But instead I was at this meeting and it was another turning point in my life. I had just gotten the opportunity to run a gallery Monday through Friday and be the manager of a gallery and it was it was going to take me away from this teaching gig that wasn't paying that much and just wasn't really uh, my niche. And so, you know, that was the day that I was like, I cannot waste another second be like being forced to do things and missing celestial opportunities like this. I was like, that's it. The next day, pretty much, I went to the gallery, never looked back at that teaching gig, and it's just the way it happened. And you know, this kind of shows some of the phenomena that happened. All of nature, cicadas were louder, horses and cows were reacting. Everyone was reacting to this um, this eclipse. It was so odd. The darkness really triggered insects to come sing. You know, I think every single life form was affected by this celestial moment and by all these celestial moments. And it's just the way it's just the way it is. It's the magic that these things bring, whether it's just from what they make us think of and what they uh, attract, or it's the invisible energies that they portray and the the symbolism of just being a celestial part of this world and being a unique part of it. And just like how when you're born in the celestial heavens above you are symbolic to who you may become in astrology I think all these things are similar and where we are in our lives are reflective of these uh, celestial objects and like if we're ready to embrace what the energies that they're bringing and the thought processes that they're capable of inspiring then we will obtain a greater pleasure and a greater power from these objects and the people that go around and ignore them and don't look at them and don't care about them you know that's that's them but the people that are really positively affected by them that's another thing and these are some old books that are showing um, some comments and different celestial descriptions and ways to look at the world. And I figured I'd just show some of these old pictures, throw these in here, and um, just to show that, you know, this is, I mean, these are 1500s and 1600s descriptions of comets, but, you know, what were the Egyptians thinking about these? What were the ancient Mayans thinking about these? And these tools, all these tools before our modern telescope were used to measure accurately the degrees, the angles, the the perception, the ellipses, the cycles, the everything, the pathways. And we don't use any of these anymore. We trust it all to like digital technology, which can be manipulated. And so it really, you know, it's an interesting, interesting thought. But the people back in the day, I'm sure, were very connected to these. When the skies were clear from, or clearer from light pollution and other pollution, and they were just looking up at these things, being able to see the motions every day, you know, really affect, getting affected by the power of the celestial phenomena of this world. And so um, I really, I really don't know what all these things are, what they exactly are. I'd love to go ride a comet for a little bit and see what happens, but can't do that. 
So in conclusion, you know, I feel like these celestial objects happen very rarely and very infrequently and, you know, our perceptions of them and our knowledge of them is so controlled by professionals in each area that we really don't know what the truth is. You know, are these other people from other things? Are these other parts of the poles, beyond the poles, sending us things, sending us messages, sending, doing something, maybe crop dusting us, maybe spreading some spores around? We have no idea. Or it just could be a rock. That's the miracle of it. And, you know, this could have just been a calendar that they fixed the date on. But, you know, I think these things, when we give them purpose and we give them meaning, then they become turning points in our individual lives. And like I said about the stars and everyone's born in a certain thing, I really do feel, believe that everybody's life, everybody's individual life is created perfectly uniquely for them designed for them if they're willing to pay attention to all the signs and the signs are just overwhelmingly constantly happening every single sound you hear every single word you hear someone else over you overhear someone say can relate to you this whole world and universe is symbolic everything you see is symbolic if you're paying attention to it and these celestial objects are almost like scales you know who's paying attention the most those are the people that will get the most reward from it. If you're not paying attention, you barely receive any reward from it and you just kind of, the magic is not really there. But when you embrace the magic of these things, that's when they affect you and that's when you can really discover their true power. Like every solstice, I believe every winter solstice, you know, it's always kind of like a bad string of events, a little bit, or negative things, and then right when the light starts coming back, things in my life usually start to change for the better. It's just the way it's always happened. I'm not sure why. It's but kind of like observing the sun's rays when they appear in the distance to shine right at you. And you know they're not shining at everyone, they're shining at just you because you're looking at it, you're admiring it, and it's all from your perspective. Everything we see is from our magical, unique, perfect perspective. And so all these celestial objects are the same. They all affect us as globally or worldly, and they also affect us individually stronger than we can ever imagine. So we have to realize it. Every day really is a miracle, and when you factor in these celestial phenomena, whatever their origins are, it just makes everything even more miraculous and outstanding to be a part of. And so we gotta just ride it like this drawing, the cosmic sailor, just gotta take it as it comes, embrace it with a smile, and we must be ready to embrace whatever comes next. And there will be more celestial events, that is a guarantee, and hopefully we can get to the bottom of what they truly are and truly mean in their magic and power. And so now hear the comet, that song that broke me into a new realm and during Hail Bop, associated with the Heaven's Gate guy speaking in the background. Enjoy, bless you all. Of this planet, that run this planet, by the way. Those forces would do anything they can to keep these from succeeding with their task. To keep number two example of those that can go from succeeding in their task and would do anything to keep even an initial yeah, believer from yeah, believing yeah, their the whole yeah, effort. Yeah. The lower forces whole effort. Yeah. their name 
and ask for riches, ask for anything that you want, they will give you the things that you want and make you feel good about it. It's even so popular today in religions that God wants you to live a, an abundant life. And so ask him for what your needs are. He doesn't want you to be raggedy and poor. And of course, that's true, he doesn't. But that doesn't justify seeking a kingdom here instead of seeking his kingdom. You don't seek his kingdom unless you seek to get out of this kingdom. You can't have both. His kingdom is never going to coexist with the human kingdom. That's impossible. That's like the humans getting down on their all fours and existing with the dog kingdom and, and having an exchange there and stay and the humans staying and restricted to dog houses and restricted to dog food and res restricted to dog behavior. It doesn't make any sense. Why would the kingdom that made the human kingdom find fulfillment in the human kingdom? Now, the, a remarkable thing exists, the most remarkable thing that you can possibly imagine, and that is their design was that they could make these little mental deposits in human plants. We'll call those deposits, for sake of understanding, we'll call them soul. And those little deposits are really just like a little bit of hardware or a little capacity for information. It's a storehouse for information. And in that little soul, there is a little bit of next level mind. And wherever that next level made those deposits in human plants of souls, there is a little bit of information in those souls. And that little bit of information can permit the person who has that soul to actually recognize the kind of information that I am passing to you now. now uh, even as you listen to me, you might recognize it, but the lower forces and your genetic programming, everything says, oh, don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. That's horrible. That's Antichrist. Or that's, that's not God as I know it. That's something altogether different. I'm afraid that what you have been listening to, I am not blaming you for listening to it. You hardly stood a chance. The lower forces, these forces have been so strong and have developed so strong that they have just brainwashed and kept totally intoxicated humans at every level around the globe so that they're totally preoccupied with make money, put it in the bank, have more children, have more grandchildren, send them to college, leave all this so that they can have a future and they can have a future and they, what is that? That's extend human kingdom, extend human kingdom, extend human kingdom. Oh, yes, we go to church once in a while, and we talk about heaven, talk about kingdom of heaven. But we really, it's like most people don't even want to touch it because they don't really know what it is. They just have to have the faith that, oh, well, that's what I go to if I've been good. And I just have to trust that that's what I go to. That doesn't make any sense. Well, you can say... Why are you telling me it doesn't make any sense? That's where my trust is. That's where my faith is. I know that it is. It's not your fault. I know that's where your trust is. I know that's where your faith is. And I'm desperate to give you help so that you can leave this.